Yeah, March Madness, uh, it is upon us. It's here. Men's tournament, right? They start tonight, I believe, um, with some of those first four games. So i um, happy to still be playing, happy to be playing in the NCAA tournament. Um, really excited for our group, um, you know, and even looking back on the last 11 plus months to be where we are. Um, yeah, really, really proud of what we've accomplished up to date. Um, would love to do something special here over the weekend and, and, and weeks to come if we can. Um, but just proud that we put ourselves in the position to hear our names called the other night and, um, yeah, to continue to play. Um, so, yeah, not much for me, I guess, other than that, the excitement. Uh, finally, that 12 days was a little different, having those 12 days off after the tournament. Had never done that in my career. Um, so kind of had to manage that one a little bit, but had the opportunity to get a little bit healthier and, and work on us a little bit and, and keep the competitive juices going. Um, and then now, again, like a typical week where we know who we're going to play um, to kind of start getting ready for Princeton and, uh, and, and what they do in a really, really good basketball team. So I'm sure you'll have some questions on them, and I'll answer that um, as we get going. Gotten a lot healthier over the over the time of rest. Uh, will she still need a, a brace, or just kind of what's like the latest? Yeah, no, she's gotten healthier. I don't know if anybody is completely healthy this time of year, but um, she's battled back from that and done a really good job. Um, as far as the brace, I don't know. That'll probably be up to her and the uh, the medical team. I think she's trying to push for not wearing it um, and would like to get out of that thing as soon as possible. Um, but again, yeah, I'll leave that up to those guys to figure out if she needs it or not. Uh, she's back. Back. Yep. Okay. Mark, your own experience in terms of the NCAA, I mean, you were in a one-bid league before, obviously now getting an AQ. So uh, getting the AQ from there, now getting the at-large. So just, I don't know, what's the difference in coaching at a Power 5 where you can get an at-large from a group of five? And do you feel for those schools in a group of five? Um, you do, um, and I've been at both, obviously, now, and uh, I was excited to get to this level because it does feel a little bit different when you get to the conference tournament knowing that your season doesn't necessarily depend on those two or three games, um, you know, but my SFA, you know, where I came from, just lost by one in their, you know, conference final um, and had a really good year, and, and Cal Baptist beat them, who had a really special year, too, but have other coaching friends out there that, you know, some of which had the best year in their school's history, and then they didn't shoot well on a night or didn't play very well, and then they don't get to go um, experience the NCAA tournament. So the pressure on the mid-major teams at the conference tournament is is next level. Um, you know, I was a Division II coach for a long time, and it felt the same thing when you're playing in the Elite Eight, um, national championship type game for a conference tournament because there was so much on the line. Um, you know, so a little different going to the Big 12 tournament, but at the same time, we're competitive as, as heck, and we wanted to win it and wanted to hoist a trophy at the end of that. Um, but it, there was some sense of relief, I guess, knowing that if we didn't win it, we would still be able to advance to the NCAA tournament. Um, and the Big 12 and the quality of competition certainly allows that to happen. So thrilled to be in it um, with the at-large. Um, any way you get it, I was a 12 seed both times I'd been before against a five. So first time as a as an eight, nine, or I guess technically the higher seed although there's really not much difference here in the eight and the nine at all. Um, but it doesn't change anything other than that. Speaking of coaching in the tournament, uh, how different do you have to coach when it's one and done, and how different uh, do you expect your players to play? Uh, hopefully I, not much, to be completely honest. Um, I think you want to stay true to what you are and what got you there. Um, now you hang on to every possession a little bit more. There's certainly a different feel and intensity to it. Um, but I think you have to be careful changing because then the players sense that. They maybe change who they are or even the shots they take or what we're doing defensively. So you just have to be extremely dialed in um, to the game plan, to what your strengths are. Um, and then I think typically once the ball gets tossed though you get lost in the game and you just start we just play hoops and I just coach like I've been coaching and and just trying to lead them you know as best as I can but yeah I think you got to be careful trying to change what you've done that's been pretty successful up to date so what, uh, what did you find out about Princeton yeah, quality, quality uh, program team. They're having a fantastic year. Um, it's five years in a row for them in the tournament. Um, you know, they, they beat North Carolina State a year ago in the tournament, beat Kentucky the year before that in the tournament. So, I mean, they're, they're good. They're really, really good, well-coached. Um, they're tough. They're physical. They rebound it really well. 
Um, the three guards lead them in scoring. Um, you know, don't don't shoot a ton of threes, but you know can get going from three. And, and then they kind of kill teams at the mid range. Um, they're elite as any team, as good as any team at the mid range that we have seen. Um, and then defensively, I think they they're giving up like fifty two a game in their last five. You know, fifty five overall, but the last five is even lower than that. So this team can guard um, really really well. Um, and, you know, and there's some versatility to what they do. So um, no, as I like to say, full attention for sure. They're this is a quality opponent. You know, on, paper, I'm sorry. on paper, you know, you guys are right there, you know, 57, 56 points a game. Like you said, they're 55. So very, very similar, but it's, it seems like it's two different approaches to, to get to that points allowed. Um, yeah, lots of different ways to do things. Yeah. We, we certainly do it differently than they do. Um, you know, with mixing defenses and the press and those types of things. But, um, no, they're very good at what they do. And, and they can get going in the full court and score in a hurry if you're not careful. And then, you know, I think they're exceptional elite in the half court when they can run their offense. And it's good. And they are. I mean, it, the timing is great. They know what they're looking for. They know their roles. Um, the, their Caitlin Chin, their point guard, is, is really dynamic and, and leads the show for them. And uh, the St. Rose kid's pretty special, too, on the wing. And then another freshman wing that's good. And these two posts that are physical um, – um, and then they have depth, you know, and then they just keep bringing them in, you know, off the bench. So, uh, yeah, no, they've had a great year and had some close close games early against some Power 5 teams, beat Oklahoma earlier in the year, um, you know, and they have some tournament tournament experience from the past few years. They only beat UCLA, right? I, mean, yeah. uh, I think they lost to UCLA by just like two or three. Yeah. But, yeah, close game. Ruby, um, do you see any similarities with Gino or does she have her own style when you study her? Uh, well, there's some, I mean, some of the offensive stuff, some of the chin action stuff might come from, from some of that, from Gino's days. But um, no, I think at this point, she's put her own stamp on that program and, and done a tremendous job, um, you know, there on both ends. But yeah, there's probably, I mean, I think you always take a little bit of who, you, who you're around or work for or play for, those types of things. So um, some of it, but no, I think it's, they're their own, they're their own identity ability to score, it seems like at multiple levels of the court, and then Mitchell, really good rebounder, the best in the Ivy League. Do they remind you of anyone in the Big 12 from that standpoint of really dynamic guard, but really good rebounder as well on the inside? Well, a lot of the Big 12 rebounds, so that, you know, that's been an Achilles heels of ours all year. So, um, you know, a specific team, no, probably not. Um, a little bit different, um, but definitely, I mean, they've got dynamic guards that can really score it. Um, you know, don't really shoot it necessarily at the post position from the perimeter, but they understand what, you know, their role is and they do a great job of it. So, um, no, a little bit different. And, and then just, you know, the, they don't quite have the size of some of the Big 12, um, just as in height, but they play just as hard and they're just as physical as some of the Big 12 teams. I notice you, I'm sure you studied that Oklahoma game, and I'm sure the Oklahoma team that they played then is different than the team you faced later. What did you see from that that they were able to do against Oklahoma? Yeah, uh, I haven't got all the way through that game yet, to be completely honest. That was a while back, so I kind of start now and work my way backwards. But you are right, Oklahoma was a little different. I'm not taking anything away from that win because that's a fantastic win. But Oklahoma, from what I've seen so far, looked a little different late in the year than they did early in the year. Um, and I thought they struggled Oklahoma a little bit early and then found their way. So uh, we'll keep digesting that one a little bit. I mean, you'll, we'll watch it in detail because it's a common opponent and the only one we have. So we do need to you know, evaluate that one a little bit. But um, and, and we still have some time. But um, yeah, we've kind of focused more on what they've looked like here lately than, than where they started to because Princeton's changed. Um, even one of their, you know, their lineup has changed since then. They're, they weren't starting one of the post players that starts now that started in that Oklahoma game. So I've seen a little bit of it, but not enough to, okay. to completely evaluate it. I wonder if basketball reached the point where they don't have to have Iowa playing at home in, in this and where you can, you know, have so much similar to the men. Yeah, no, I think we're getting close to that. So, yeah, the the home sites hosting the first two rounds. I think women's basketball is, yeah, we're trending in that direction for sure. I don't know if they're, we're quite there yet, but this is the closest we've ever been um, without question. And I think you see some of the conference tournaments on these neutral floors and the crowds that they're drawing. I think we still have opportunities um, to go to neutral sites here pretty soon. Um, you know, when that is, I'm not sure, but I know we're closer now than we ever have been with the excitement around women's basketball. I, I know it's the NCAA tournament, but how do you keep your team from in the back of their minds looking ahead to that next game if they get to there? Yeah, I, I don't think that's overly difficult if I'm being completely honest. I mean, there is no there is no Iowa if, if, if you don't take care of Princeton and, 
you know, we've had the, the social media stuff going around, and I'll just kind of talk through that, too, for a second, because that got completely misconstrued, and and we know how that works. Um, you know, so when the announcement came, there was maybe, I don't know, a little disappointment with some of the people in the room that were asking, you know, do we think we, you know, we got the wrong seed and those types of things, thought you might be a little bit higher, um, you know, and then it, and that was okay, and no big deal, though, and then it turned into, okay, well, let's you know, let's talk about Princeton now. So we talked through Princeton and we went through all of that and what we knew about them, which wasn't a ton at the time. So then we talked through that and then it turns into Iowa and you're going to, then if you win, you get to advance and go play Iowa. And then it's of course, Caitlin Clark, because she's the, she's the face of like, if we're being real, she's the face of college basketball right now, men and women, I think uh, above all else. And, and so everybody knows Caitlin Clark. And so, um, you know, and then somebody else used the comment about, you know, if we want to advance, you're going to have to send her packing. And so then I, use that phrase and now that's turned into to you know what it's turned into and people facebooking me and dming me and my family and you know i had a a facebook post to my wife on valentine's day and an iowa fan has now commented on you know something about the biggest mistake of my life was you know poking the bear and caitlin clark and you know there was no intent in any way shape or form to do anything like that it was just having fun with the crowd at the time and we will never look past princeton we will that's all we have talked about as a team that's all we're going to prepare for if we are fortunate enough to beat them yes that would be a great experience to play caitlin clark at iowa i guess that would be her final home game right um because she's announced that she's going to go pro so yeah you know and, and yeah and, and then at the same time like i don't what would you want me to say to my team you know like so it, it's gotten yeah bleacher report picks it up and it's just you know all over the place now but you know there was no intent i'm not you know I, she is a phenomenal player great program and so is princeton and there is no guarantee that we ever even get to iowa if we don't put our focus on princeton so we will we aren't we don't we don't operate that way that's not even in my character i don't even you know i'm not one to go talk trash and do those types of things so we'll put the attention on us it's kind of gotten carried away a little bit but at the same time maybe people are talking about women's basketball or West Virginia women's basketball so um, we'll roll with it and look at it at that way but um, no we, we've got our attention in the right place to answer your original question is uh, it's all about Princeton most of your players have NCAA experience at one stop or another does that help I mean just you know they've, they've been on the stage, seen the pressure? Yeah, no, it helps. Yeah, without question. No, every time you go through it, I think you're always a little bit better. Um, it's called experience, right? I think all of us and whatever our careers are, we get better through experience and decisions that we would, you know, maybe have back when we're younger. Um, you know, and, and so I think I'm a better coach because I've been through them and, and the players will be. Um, now, if you've done it together, that is even a better advantage. We haven't all been together, but there was a core group of six, right, that were in the tournament a year ago. Um, and then other kids that have transferred in that maybe were a part of them in different programs. So, um, yeah, I think we'll be we'll be good to go. We'll be relaxed and we'll be excited to play when we tip it up Saturday. At this point, um, they have six that played in the NC State game last year and three that played in, against Kentucky. So experience-wise, they probably have more than you have. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, they were there, and they won a game together a year ago. We haven't – we have not done that yet. So, no, there is experience there. They've won two, you know, two games in the last two years. We have not done that here, and we have a new coach. They have – coach that's been in that say program for a while so uh, no there's a little bit that could be advantage them but um, you know I think when you go play these games it's you know it's whoever plays better typically wins this is not a typical nine seed I mean there's RPI's th their nets 34 they play a really good non-conference schedule obviously um, and then she's had uh, a success this is not what you normally see from a nine is it I mean, I, I don't know. Probably not. I think they're pretty good. I didn't think we were an eight either, you know, yeah. so we could sit here and say I didn't think we were an eight and they're not a nine. So you get a pretty good, you know, could, I mean, it's going to be a really good first round game. Um, it could easily have been a second round game potentially in some capacity. I mean, just based on however seeds work. But no, it's going to be two really good basketball teams. Um, but I think when you get into these seed lines, that's what you get in the first round. Like anything in that that range, you're going to get two quality opponents, um, you know, that aren't really familiar with each other. I don't know how – have we played them? Do you even know, John? Have we ever uh, – have we no. played Princeton? So I don't know if there's any even history yeah. there. We uh, have. 16. Yeah. 16, so what? Yeah. 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 Just yeah. One time. Yeah. So, yeah, one time. And it, it's to match up. Right there, so. So that's completely yeah. different. Completely yeah, so, different. no, different coaches, different times. So, yeah, not, not a lot to draw off of there. Coach, when you guys have really been rolling this year, it's when you've had that third, fourth, maybe even the fifth contributor – uh, lately, 
seems like like Jordan, JJ, and then everyone else is kind of leveled off. I, you know, I don't know if you agree with that or not, but I mean, how do you kind of get the whole bunch rolling again here? Yeah, no, uh, we've worked on it a little bit since the last game to just you know get just it's really get the ball moving, get other people involved, especially early in the game. You know, share it, spread it. Let's see who's got the hot hand. You know, and, and just build confidence. I I think sometimes offensively, when you don't touch the ball for a while. You know, you get a little stagnant, and then you do touch it, and either you don't want to shoot it because you hadn't touched it, or you do shoot it, but it doesn't feel right because you it hadn't been your hands in a minute. Um, but yeah, it, it's on us to do that. We have been at our best with three or four. I mean, my goal every night is four and double figures. Um, we've probably I don't know. We can go back and look what our our record is when four get to double figures, and it's probably pretty good. When four don't, that may be when we aren't as good. So we do need to make sure we share it and spread it and get and get several kids involved who, who have an ability to score. Um, you know, but get Lauren going again, and Jayla's been really good off the bench here, you know, and Kaya and Kylie and those guys, and then the other post players off the bench. So, I mean, we, we know we have the ability to do it. We've just got to kind of get back to who we are. And playing somebody that's not maybe as familiar might help. You know, that's what happens this time of year too. Stuff you've been running earlier in the year – you know, may work again because your, you know, your conference schools just scout you and they have so much information on you that, you know, you get to the tournament and it kind of frees you up a little bit. And, and Princeton would think the same way. There's no way we can get all of their stuff in, in four or five days. It's kind of on that note, statistically, Princeton, the worst in the country defending the three, do players' eyes light up a little bit when they see that in the scouting report? And do you have to maybe rein that in a little bit to not overdo it? Yeah, and, and I think that's a little – it's a – maybe confusing or a misnomer a little bit because they don't give up very many though so you know they only give up five or 5.8 something like that a game so it's not like that you're shooting it at a high percentage and they're giving up 10 or 12 threes a game so um you know but they do keep you in front defensively and you know you have a little bit of space but that's what makes them pretty good at the rim and they can contest and so by doing that they also make up for it in other areas with what they do defensively so um you know our kids will have open shots but that's every game you know and and you've just got to be ready to convert when you get those. And so hopefully uh, when we tip it up, we have an opportunity to get those looks and do a good job sharing it. And then our kids need to shoot it with confidence for sure. As far as the time off goes, obviously it helps with injuries. Do you think it can hurt you guys at all finding your rhythm or just your cohesiveness when you get back on the floor? Uh, A little bit. I mean, we've tried to do some things now to sharpen it all back up again and really, you know, just get them back in the swing of things. So we were able to rest a little bit and then we picked up the intensity and then you get to rest just a hair. And then now it's like, no, we're, we're in full go mode at this point. So um, it's still nothing like playing a game, but we've played some quarters and we've competed and we brought in our guys to just kind of get us to play at the right pace and the right speed. Um, so, you know, maybe for, for a couple minutes, but after that, we'll settle in. I think we'll be okay. Mitchell, double zero, kind of does their dirty work. Is that how you describe mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, she's she is tough, physical, fantastic rebounder. Um, you know, I mean, she even comes into the game. She got like arm sleeves, wrist taped up, leg sleeves. Like, no, the kid's ready to go to battle. Um, and you can tell. And she was the defensive player of the year in their league, and probably rightfully so. Um, and so, yeah, she'll set the screen. She rolls. She can score at the rim, um, face up to 15 feet. Really, really good player. One other thing here, uh, 402 assists on 804 baskets. That's kind of their style, right? That's half their baskets. Half, yeah, 50%. Percent, yeah, 50% of those shots yeah, yeah. are assisted. So, um, you know, and when they're not, they're, you know, it's all, all that stuff off the dribble into their mid-range that they're, you know, I mean, this is one of the best mid-range teams by percentage, too, that we've seen all year. And analytically, a lot of people don't think that's a great shot. But, right. you know, if you can get there and shoot it at the percentage that these kids do, then, it, yeah, it's it's very effective. So, um, yeah, no, they're it, it, they're a well-disciplined, well-oiled machine if you allow them to, to flow and run offense. Yeah, going back to the beginning of the season, we obviously didn't really know anything about Jordan at that point, but we, we did know who Lauren Fields was from previous games. and um, So, you know, you kind of see her as the, the prized new newcomer coming in. So now we're at the end of the year. Have you gotten everything that you had hoped for out of Lauren? And, and you know, this time of year, is this – kind of why you bring her in for the for this kind of for this type of year yeah yes to probably all of those questions lauren has been fantastic she has i mean phenomenal kid great character great in the locker room you know all of that was there and i didn't know her unbelievably well but I, you know my staff did and that's what we wanted that's what we wanted to bring into the locker room so great fit there first and foremost and then really good fit for us she has started every game she's had huge moments for us she's hit big shots for us she's i mean she's an all defensive kid in my mind i know she didn't get it but she's an all defensive kid in this league and and i think has been 
in the past, so phenomenal defender. Um, you know, there's been some inconsistencies at times, but that's that's every kid. You know, that's not any different, you know, than Lauren. Um, so, yeah, and then I think these are going to be her best moments. Like, she's going to play really well on Saturday, and I fully expect that, and she'll be dialed in and, and probably be relaxed because she's been in the moment and played a lot of college basketball. So not only you have a game coming up, but the portal opened yesterday. So how much – Portal recruiting? Did you start doing yesterday? I assume you probably even started prior, looking at needs. But well, how much? Have you um, oh, it there? was hot and heavy yesterday. Okay. Um, I think we need to reevaluate the timing of that portal window opening on the Monday after Selection Sunday. Does not make any sense to me whatsoever. So that needs to get pushed back probably a couple weeks at least um, and allow teams to really focus on, you know, what they want to do, which is your own team. So, I mean, we have coaches and, and help um, that, that are looking at that and perusing it and keeping tabs on it um, while the rest of us kind of focus, you know, more of our attention on obviously Princeton, but no, there was, there was some recruiting going on yesterday too, mixed in there and, and trying to stay focused just so you stay on top of it. Um, but it's just the beginning too. And now with the waiver where they're all eligible and two times transfers, two time transfers can play so it's going to be it'll be interesting to see how many like what the numbers look like we got one more round of COVID kids too so they're in there and now multiple multiple transfers are, are eligible as long as they meet some certain you know academic restrictions um, so it's, it's just going to keep going you know and as teams lose they'll they'll keep going but here's what I think it's affected too soapbox here a little bit but so like the WBI is one of our postseason tournaments and they had to cancel their tournament yesterday they didn't have enough teams and so now we have the WBIT in women's basketball right that the NCAA runs and then we have the WNIT which we've had for years and the WBI well now we have because kids were going into the portal they're choosing not to play in the postseason that should probably be playing in the postseason and finishing their obligation to their team but they're choosing not to and so teams now are having to back out because they don't have enough players and so then other teams that probably even barely qualify for the postseason are getting to play which then now the w wbi doesn't even have enough teams to exist so kids aren't even getting opportunities to play in the postseason so and I don't know that the portal is all of that, but I think that's a big old piece of it right now is that, oh, ironically, these kids now are worried if they don't get in the portal early enough that, you know, they may lose out an opportunity. So they do. They choose that over finishing the postseason with their team, which forces coaches to have to back out of it and not let their kids or those that want to play on their team um, play in the postseason because they just don't have enough bodies. And so it's the unfortunate snowball circumstance of what's happened right now. And I think if we move the portal back, I think maybe more kids would stay and finish the postseason, um, and then they could go into the portal and we could all kind of be happy here and we can get more kids in the postseason, more coaches coaching in the postseason, and just more opportunity. Coach, as far as um, with the host campus sites for the first two rounds, I imagine there's probably going to be pretty good crowds at, at the other 15. I can't imagine any of them are going to equal what you guys are going to see at Iowa with the uh, – Obviously, the excitement that Clark has, has built. Is, is that anything you've, like, I mean, I can't imagine the, I mean, you guys have played against some good atmospheres this year, but I can't imagine anything is going to equal to what you're going to see this weekend. We will not have played in anything that equals right. what we will see uh, Saturday. Yeah. Um, you know, and even that's a neutral floor game, but I, they're just, it's a passionate fan base. And, you know, what they've done there and built, and obviously Caitlin Clark's been a big piece of that, but it hasn't just been her, but of course she's the face of it. Um, you know, and yeah, they've got something unbelievably special. I think I saw they've sold out every home game. Yeah this year um you know and so they'll be a you know they'll they play before us they're the i think what two o'clock their local time game on abc that day so they're gonna play in front of us so i imagine a, a big contingent will stay around you know assuming iowa advances that they'll want to watch and see who they're going to play on on that monday um so yeah so that environment will be good and then yeah whoever advances us or, or princeton's going to have a, a crazy environment that monday night or monday whatever time the game is um, um you know in her last game there pumping in noise inside the practice facility? Or? Yeah, I mean, we've done enough of that. I mean, there, once you get to a certain decibel level, which we've played in plenty of those already, like it doesn't, like, like you're already into your hand signs and, and language, you know, from that standpoint. So um, I think we'll be okay there. I mean, it's going to be loud, but we've, you know, Iowa State was really loud. K-State was really, really loud. Baylor was really, really loud where you can't hear yourself, and so you got to communicate a different way. And so we'll, we'll, we'll continue with that, but we've had that in place with all the stuff that you mentioned earlier that went out across the nation 
to be the villain when you go out. out yeah, no, it's just like it may be the way it's going to be. I guess <laughs> I think we created that one. Um, you know, but I mean, yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's not really my character. I'm not really trying to ever be the villain guy. But if I have to be, that's okay. But you know, as long as our team's excited and motivated, it's you know, it's all fun and games, really. Like it's just it's it's our sport and it's fun and people are talking about us and you know we're building excitement about it and I think we've done that with with what we've been able to do in this first year and um, again, yeah, there'll be some there'll be some fans that are probably more into it than anybody else. Uh, it will be basketball again once we tip it up. Well, just along those lines, though, um, Kansas State beat Iowa, and I'm sure you've studied that game. What did can what success did Kansas State have against Iowa? Because obviously, you were right there with Kansas twice and had opportunities to win both those games. Yeah, again, I mean, yeah, we, and we watched those early. They split with them because they've already played them twice, um, so they each won. Um, you know, and, and we just don't have the same team that Kansas State does. Like, it's just a – I mean, and, and I've seen it. It just – I don't know if I can get a ton from that. You know, we don't have a Yoka Lee. We don't work through her like Kansas State can do. So a little bit of a different – you know, a different look. But again, like I, I really haven't studied Iowa. I mean, I've just watched Iowa more as the fan up to date than I have. I have not scouted Iowa at all yet. So yeah. um, that's not really my emphasis. I've just watched Kansas State play them because that was a high level. Well, you had to study Kansas State. Yeah, but yeah. I wasn't watching Iowa play Kansas State to get ready for Kiowa right. for uh, uh, for the for Kansas State either. So um, yeah, when the time comes, I'll put my attention there. But that's not the time yet for me to worry about Iowa. Make up like Kansas State. No, that yeah, but the, what they have and what we have are right. two completely different, different yeah lineups. With Princeton going thirteen and one in league play, and they didn't have a ton of close games, but obviously you guys down the stretch had pretty much close game night in night out. Do you think that can be a, a help to you guys because you know how to play in these close games late where it's decided in the last two minutes? Uh, hopefully, yeah. I hope we get some experience from that. Now we didn't close them the way I would like to have closed those games but again every time you go through it you get a little bit better um you know they're they're battle tested too though i know you're, i mean in the ivy league maybe not quite as much or too many close games but their semifinal was close against penn that came down to the last five minutes in a good game um, columbia always plays them you know fairly tough as well um so they've had some and, and they've done it before so th they'll be ready but yeah you hope the big 12 prepares you for these for these opportunities a lot of star power right now in women's college basketball, Caitlin Clark, et cetera, et cetera. With so many eyes being on the tournament this year, what can that do for a player like JJ, who obviously awards, she's up for the same as all those players are, can that get her on that kind of national spotlight, spotlight as well? Sure can, yeah. It, it can for JJ, any player on the team, our, our program, you know, that we're trying to build here. So, yeah, now you get the national spotlight. You're on national TV. Um, you know, I think there's there's people that don't watch basketball that all of a sudden start watching basketball in March Madness and are filling out brackets and don't even know what they're talking about, but they get into it, you know. And, and uh, you know, and us being in Iowa City, will obviously that will take it to another level as well because she's the face of, of women's basketball. So, yeah. JJ's got opportunity. All of our kids do, you know, for our program. All of it's it's all on the table right now. Um, but that's what makes this such a great great time of year, and, and our sport is growing. And um, you know, it's not just Caitlin. There's lots of other players and coaches that are that are helping build this. But we are certainly going to a site that is passionate right now about women's basketball. Does it seem like yesterday you were just up on that stage being introduced? Has this gone by fast? It has. This is. And I don't know, it, Right now, I will all say it seems like it's been the fastest year of, of my life and season. And, um, you know, I probably felt like that my first year at SFA and some of the other stops, too. But, no, this is this has flown by. And when I keep looking at the date, you know, and it keeps getting closer because I think it was April 5th or 6th when I had the press conference somewhere in through there um, that, man, we're creeping up on that here pretty quick. And so all of that and where we were a year ago and some of those memories to where we are now is, yeah, it, it has flown by. But, it's, man, I think it's flown by because I've had so much fun doing it. Rest of this week, I assume you have shoot around press conference Friday, day before, like they always do. So, when do you guys travel? What's up for you guys? For yeah, we don't really know. We will leave on Thursday, but we do not know when yet. So, that's still, we're waiting on that. Um, so, a lot of it's still up in the air. Um, but we'll practice here all the way. We'll practice here Thursday, too, and then leave sometime after practice whenever we get that. Um, scheduled and wait on the airline to kind of give us the time. Um, and then honestly, beyond that, I don't even know what the, I don't know what the schedule is after that. I don't know when we do the press conference. I don't know when we practice there or shoot around. Uh, Kayla Scott handles all of that, and I entrust in her to handle it, so I don't have to worry about that stuff. And again, I can focus on the things that I need to. Just show up when they tell you to show up. I do. Huh? Yep. Yep. <laughs> Just do what they tell me to do. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys.